didn't know then, but I know now what he meant. The great tradition and the great history of the Maple Leafs that I'm now part of. Thank you very much. The first European-born player drafted first overall in NHL history, Matt Sundin, born February 13, 1971, in Broma, Sweden. He was a player that influenced a generation of fans and players alike. A power forward that could shoot, deke, pass, use his body, and be responsible on defense? This is Matt Sundin. After being drafted number one by the Quebec Nordiques in 1989, Sundin's debut was stellar for a rookie, scoring 23 goals and 59 points, but was overshadowed by an abysmal Nordiques season. In this case, Matt's being second in team scoring behind only Joe Sakic was not a good sign. Quebec finished 16, 50, and 14, placing last in the conference with multiple losing streaks, including an October-November stretch that saw 14 losses in a row and a 17-game winless streak. While Sundin improved with 76 points in his second year, 114 in his third year, and 85th in his fourth, the Nordiques finished last in their division in three of the four years Sundin played with them losing to Montreal in the conference semifinals in 92-93. One year before becoming a powerhouse and eventually moving to Colorado on June 28, 1994, Nordiques sent Sundin, Garth Butcher, Todd Warner, and a 1994 first-round draft pick to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Wendell Clark, Sylvain Lefebvre, Landon Wilson, and a 1994 first-round draft pick. In a trade that saw Quebec going for grit and experience over youth and speed. Look at the 94-95 Nordiques roster. Sakic, Forsberg, Owen Nolan, Mike Ritchie, Wendell Clark, Valerie Kamensky, Adam Deadmarsh, Claude Lapointe, Chris Simon. This team was not to be messed with. Andy Van Helleman has waved it off. Oh, Kovalev is down and hurt. And away comes Quebec. That's trouble. Many wondered what a 95-96 Colorado Avalanche team with Sundin would have looked like, considering the fact Clark was traded away to the Islanders, an offense of Sackick and Forsberg who combined for 236 points that season, add in Sundin, and you may have had one of the greatest cup-winning teams ever. Sundin's first year in the blue and white happened to be the 94-95 lockout, seeing him score 47 points in 47 games and playing 12 more games for Jurs Garden in the Swedish League. 
The lockout marked the beginning of Sundin's dominating success, however. Over the following nine seasons, Sundin scored 30 goals or more seven times and made the playoffs seven times. The 96-97 season was his best in Toronto, scoring 41 goals, totaling 97 points. From 98 to 2004, not only were the Leafs a shoe in for the playoffs, there was always going to be some sort of Sundin magic, even when the Leafs became shoe ins for early golfing trips. Paired with an unlimited amount of chatter about who he will play with and who the Leafs will sign, Toronto became the go-to team for veteran stars who had a thirst for the Stanley Cup. Ron Francis, Joe Newendike, Ed Belfour, Gary Roberts, Alex McGillney, Brian Leach, Phil Housley, Eric Lindros, Doug Gilmore, Owen Nolan, the list goes on. None of these players could lift the Leafs to the Stanley Cup final, though. But to say Sundin's forays into the playoffs were without excitement or rivalry would be a disservice to the many exciting series he played in. There exists no such rivalry during the Matt Sundin era quite like the Leafs versus Sens rivalry. Of the seven Leafs playoff runs Sundin took part in, four of the final five included intense series with Ottawa. The exact same emotion the current Leafs fans go through when a series with the Boston Bruins is on the horizon. The loss of hope that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Those are the same feelings Senators fans had to endure for what seemed like an eternity. At least Sens fans didn't leave this era completely empty-handed. The infamous Sens stationary bike interviews that became immortalized during this time will stay with us forever. But to bring the Leafs fans back down to earth, the two most memorable playoff moments of Sundin's career with the Leafs are, in fact, efforts resulting in dramatic failure. The 2002 Conference Finals versus the Carolina Hurricanes is the closest the Leafs have come in the modern era to ending their horrific cup drought. In Game 6, Mats came close to saving the Leafs, scoring a late goal to take it to overtime. But it was in that overtime, the name Nick Wallin would be burned into the brains of Leafs fans forever. Jelena is back out for Carolina. The center. Rips a puck into the Leafs zone. Erickson back there. And McGillney takes it from him. Throws it behind the net. They score! I think it was Jelena who knocked it in, and Carolina is in a celebration mode now for sure. The building is shocked. Two seasons later, the Leafs and Sundin would make their last playoff run together, again ending in heartbreak. After a devastating hit by Darcy Tucker, Jeremy Roenick eliminated the Leafs for the last time before the 4 5 lockout in Sundin's final playoff game in Toronto. Off and finds glass. Kapanen darts it. Takes a huge hit from Tucker. And he is hurt. Kapanen does not know where he is. Nixon picked it in. Will clear to center. And here's Ronick the other end. Toronto with the body. Ronick with the puck. Ronick the shot. He's down. He's down. Jeremy Ronick sends the Flyers to the Eastern Conference Finals. Sudden death magic for JR. And the Flyers move on. 
The post-lockout era from 2005 to 2016 was as bad as it gets for Leafs fans. Making the playoffs only once, and that was in the shortened season, only to suffer from what can only be known as one of the most epic collapses of all time against, you guessed it, the Boston Bruins. The net throws the puck out front, they score! Great pet save by Reimer out to the point now. Bergeron across for Chara. He hammers one here. Save, rebound, that's score! I don't know what Bergeron, David Krejci to Bergeron. Screenshot scores! Here's Bergeron with a shot. Rebound is loose. Sagan can't get it. Score! Grab by Sean! In Matt's final three seasons with the Leafs, the Buds began their playoff drought by soundly performing worse and worse. It became clockwork that the Leafs would start off hot, slowly get worse, lose big in a Western road swing, until Sundin spearheaded a late season push, barely missing the playoffs. Toronto seemed to find the most exciting ways to lose, including in 2007, where an epic win over Montreal put them in the final playoff spot until Wade Dublovitz, of all people. I'll say it again, Wade Dublovitz made an even more epic poke check against the Devils in a shootout to ensure Sundin's playoff hopes were crushed. The line is Kodiakovo trying the screen shot, score! You shoot it out the net, you never know! Haberlay won't shoot it, McKay can't shoot it, does scores! Score. Kozlov takes it. The lumbering move in on Clemenson, and he scores, going low. Duplowitz makes a save. The Isles are in. Hook checked away. The New York Islanders clinch the final playoff berth in the Eastern Conference. Wade Duplowitz, hook check the Islanders into the playoffs. In 08, the Toronto media that has thrown so many Leafs players under the bus, did, did I hear someone say Vesatoskala? started the Great Inquisition against Sundin. Mats, are you leaving? Mats, do you want to go to a different team? Mats, did you eat your chunky seafood chowder? The questions were always answered with an, I don't know, to the point where Sundin looked like he was becoming ill. Sundin did leave, however, joining the Canucks for the 0809 season, alongside fellow Swedes Alex Edler, Matthias Oland, and the Sedin brothers, making the franchise very cup hopeful. Even though Vancouver fell 4-2 to the Blackhawks in the second round, ending Sundin's final attempt at a cup, you know it wouldn't be a Leaf story without one final loss at the hands of their greatest captain. February 21st, 2009, Sundin closed the book on his career with the Leafs for good. Matt Sundin finished with 564 goals, 785 assists for 1,349 points. He was the first Swede to reach 1,000 points and will go down in history along with Peter Forsberg and Nicholas Lindstrom as possibly the greatest Swedish player to ever play the game. Borja Salmi told me when I became the Leaf, Matt, you will love moving to Toronto you would love being a Maple Leaf. I didn't know then, but I know now what he meant. The great tradition and the great history of the Maple Leafs that I'm now part of. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.